anyways, you guys send me a question or give me a very brief, like, detailed about your situation. Maybe what kind of, um, you know, it's like, it's an advice column. But I try not to be too critical on you guys. It's going to be questions from the Discord. So if you type exclamation point Discord and you head over to the Adept the Best Discord, there's a channel at the top under stream where it says adept answers and that's where you type in your question. Don't troll it because you'll probably be banned on site. We don't like people that troll adept answers and heart to heart. You get banned very easily. How did you first start growing off of your stream as a small streamers? I feel it's harder to grow nowadays and you get lost in the mess even if your content was unique or cool. Not saying mine is, I've just seen some of them myself. How did you never get discouraged and stay motivated? Um, I feel like if you're just starting out with streaming and you're like only focused on like making it big and making a ton of money, like you're you're just it's wrong. Like you're you're just doing all the wrong things. That's just my personal opinion. Maybe there are some people who have gotten like successful off of behaving that way, and maybe that was their whole entire goal and their whole entire plan. But personal personally for me, I can't relate to that because when I first started streaming, there was no money to be made, you know, like there was kind of donations like you can make donations off of it. But I didn't know people were like making bank back in the day. Like I would watch Casey Tron get shit on for like two dollars every 10 minutes, you know, and I was like, I could do that. I don't give a shit what people say about me. And so I just turned my stream on while I was playing and also like originally um i just wanted to stream so that people would join my call of duty lobbies like it was never a thing for me where i was like i mean it kind of was i knew i could make something of it like especially because youtube was a thing at that point so i knew that if i streamed and like kind of put myself out there to the world like i knew i could make something of it one way or another even if it wasn't twitch I lived a lot, uh, a big portion of my life, like not really believing in myself and and believing other people's doubts and and things like that. I but adapt. how are you doing today on a good Thursday? Also, was up chat. Hope y'all are having a good day. Keep your heads up. Adept. Oh, thank you, Scorpion Swag. Thank you so much. Thank you for the ten dollars. That means a lot. But um, like I was saying before. Sometimes you just have to believe in that confidence. You just have to hold on to it. Like no matter how much someone's trying to break it down, tear it down, you have to hold on to it. So, but next one. So I don't know. I, I think you do streaming because you love it. You don't do it because you're aiming to make a bunch of money. I don't think that you're really going to succeed that way. Maybe you will, but uh, that's just my opinion. I adapt. I'm a very introvert introverted person, so I mess up most of the friendships I form. I tend to lie to them because I'm embarrassed of my real personality due to being traumatized by opening up, the opening up to other people I thought I could trust. And in the end, they betrayed me, which led me to depression. I developed trust issues with anyone that I speak to. Life's, life's kind of about, unfortunately, investing in people, even when you don't feel like you're ready to or, or you're not quite sure if they um, are deserving of it. Like, the, the only thing you can do is, one, you have to be yourself. You need to stop lying about who you are because it's only gonna make it worse when you do open up those doors to those people because they're gonna feel very misled by you. Like there have been several instances that I can think of in my head right now where it's like, I knew somebody in the past, I really trusted them. I thought they were being honest about who they were. And then like, they would just be someone completely different. And I'm like, how would I ever trust you again when you couldn't even be honest about who you are? When you couldn't even be honest about like, what, what kind of, things really uh, interest you and inspire you and what you do with your daily life. Like, how do you trust someone like that? So if you're lying to all the people around you, they're gonna feel the same way, most likely. Like, they're not gonna like that you've hid big parts of your life from them and they were sitting here trusting you the whole time to be their friend. You know, because it, it makes, it just makes you feel like you don't know your friend at all. And it, it, it's a very weird dynamic, so. Um, but now here's here's another thing. You need to decide what level of vulnerability that you're okay with. And that can 100% vary from person to person. With person A, you could be 10% vulnerable. And with person B, you could be like 80% vulnerable. I don't think that there's anyone 
in this life we were ever going to meet where you tell them 100,000% of everything at all times. There are just going to be some things in this life that you just keep to your damn self. I have to be honest. Either you keep it like, let's say there's 10% of like your life experiences that you just keep inside and maybe reveal it to like a, a, a therapist or maybe one person or maybe a mom or dad. But that's it. Like, no, there, there's so many things that you're going to experience in this life, especially as you get older. When people are starting families or, or going through a divorce or a marriage or certain things, like, once you put those things out there and your friends and your family know and your cousins know and, your, and, your, and everyone knows, it's hard to ever have them get over that shit because they will focus in on those things to make you feel bad and make your other person feel bad you don't have to tell like even if someone is your best friend even if someone's your husband your wife or whatever they don't need to know every single thought that goes into your head now you should be a mature enough person on your own to make sure that those thoughts are are reasonable and not like treacherous or trifling ass thoughts you know in your head it might feel nice to open up to people but in reality you can only 100% trust yourself. There's even going to be times where, where your loved ones are really going to let you down. Like you're going to experience, you're going to explain to them the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to you. And they're going to tell you that one thing you wish no one ever said. And that's just, that's just how it be sometimes. Like, you know, um, you, you have to get to know people and evaluate their maturity and and their emotional IQ, I would say. Hi Adept, I have been watching for a couple days and I'm already in love with chat and you. You guys help me a lot when I'm sad in your community. Makes me feel amazing. That's great. And um, I kind of wish more people use Twitch in the way that you do. I think it's becoming a place where people like to hate watch or they like something and they do want to be a part of it, but they don't want to admit that they want to be a part of it. So they hate on it. Um, they talk shit about it, they're very nasty about it, you know, things like that. So good for you and good for people like you that are, you know, using the internet in a in a fun, powerful way and, and, a, and a meaningful way. Like, you don't have to use the internet in a good way if you don't want to, I guess. But it's nice and it's refreshing when people do. What do you do when your father and your mom are divorced? And my mom is accusing my father of sexual so she can steal money from him and she's lying constantly. She was trying to get a hold of me so I don't live with my father and I feel like I have no say in it. Um, you know, there are going to be times where there are questions that I just can't answer fully. And I think this is going to be one of those times because in scenarios like that, like that starts becoming legal, that starts becoming civil battles. And I'm not somebody who's equipped or knowledgeable enough to help you with a city battle. The only thing that I can offer is obviously from one child to another child of a different family is that sometimes your parents will go through things that you don't quite understand and that take a toll on you and and my my words to you would just be to try and focus in on yourself don't lose track of yourself and what makes you happy and and you know for someone like me whenever i'd hear my parents fight i'd get very very stressed out and like my back would start tingling you know like my spine was tingling and and it, it would make me so like heightenedly paranoid that it, it was like very stressful so um you have to learn how to recognize that that's happening and go do something healthy with that it takes a lot of courage it can be very uncomfortable to hear like your parents fight or maybe your friends fighting or something but you have to just find healthy ways to cope and to make sure that you're still taken care of okay that's something that i like you know how they always go like what's one thing you wish you could tell nine-year-old you like that shit i wish i could tell my nine-year-old self like hey it's time right now to start looking for healthy ways to cope you know because my my ways were not very healthy i would just like do shit to drown out the noise or the feelings or something which is not a good thing i've only ever had my mom so i don't know what that's like honestly um i think it's funny because sometimes you'll meet people and they're like man i wish my parents would get a divorce so they would stop freaking fighting all the time 
And then the other kids are like, well, at least you have both your parents together. Like, I wish my parents were together, you know? But that's like, I think that's one of the purest forms of like the grass is greener on the other side.